Hi, in this video we're going to be discussing wireless frequencies. So you've probably heard of these before uh, when you're connecting to a wireless hotspot, either at home or at the coffee shop or even at school. And you may have seen that there's an option for 2.4 gigahertz and a 5 gigahertz. Even on your home router, you'll usually have the option for both. So you may be wondering what these mean or what the difference is between the two. So that's what we're going to be talking about in this lesson. All right, so first we're gonna start with the 2.4 gigahertz. So this is a lower frequency band with a longer wavelength. So this means that the signals can travel further and penetrate walls and other obstacles better than five gigahertz signals. However, the 2.4 gigahertz signal is a more congested band and it's used by many different devices such as microwaves, cordless phones, and Bluetooth devices. So this congestion can lead to interference and slower speed. So then we have the five gigahertz frequency, which is a higher frequency with a shorter wavelength. This means that five gigahertz cannot travel as far as 2.4 gigahertz signals and do not penetrate walls and other obstacles as well. However, five gigahertz is also a less congested band, which means that it can offer faster speeds than the 2.4 gigahertz. So how I always like to say it is, if you're going to have devices that are farther away from your router or hotspot, you might want to use the 2.4 gigahertz just to make sure you have a good connection. But if you're right next to your router or hotspot, then use the five gigahertz to get that faster connection. Okay, so then we have some other examples here. So like I said, use 2.4. If you need a signal that can travel a long distance and penetrate walls and other obstacles, such as when connecting to a device on the other side of your house, and then use the five gigahertz if you need a faster signal and do not need to travel as far, such as when streaming video or playing video games online. And then also use the five gigahertz if you need to connect a device that is not compatible with the 2.4 gigahertz, such as some smart home devices. All right, so now we're gonna take a minute and talk about the different wireless standards. So you probably heard of these as well. So as we go along with time here, you can see that the speeds of each of these standards is starting to increase. And you might have heard of some of the terminology like we see down here, such as the 802.11G standard. So this applies to the Wi-Fi 3 standard with the 54 megabit per second speed. And that was released in 2003. So right now, as of this video, uh, we're using Wi-Fi 6, 802.11AX came out in 2019, and you can see we have a much faster speed than the previous generations. So of course your router is going to have to support this standard, and then the device that you're connecting to is also going to have to support that standard. And if not, they're most likely backwards compatible. So if your router supports 802.11ax, yet your computer is only 802.11n, it will still be able to connect to that router, it'll just operate at the slower speed. All right, so we saw the graphic, so here's a breakdown of what the uh, graphic was showing us here. So the IEEE 802.x family of standards defines a wide range of wireless networking technologies, including Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and Zigbee. And so the following is the description of the current 802.x wireless standards. All right, so we have a breakdown here. So the IEEE 802.11, so this standard defines the basic physical layer and medium access control, MAC layer protocols for Wi-Fi networks. So there have been many amendments like we saw, and each one of them adds new features and capabilities. So like you saw in the graphic here, we have A, B, G, N, A, C, and A, X with their various speeds here. And you can see, for example, 802.11n operates in the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz frequency bands with a speed of 450 to 600 megabits per second, all the way up to the current one here as of this video, operating at 9.6 gigabits per second, known as Wi-Fi 6. And then we also have this IEEE 802.15. So this standard defines a number of wireless networking technologies for low power devices, including Bluetooth and Zigbee. So the most common 802.15 standards in use today are 15.1 for Bluetooth and 15.4 for Zigbee. So if you don't know what Zigbee is, it's a wireless mesh network protocol used for many purposes, such as home automation, uh, smart energy, 
uh, retail situations, industrial controls, medical data collection, and remote wireless microphone configuration. Those are a few examples. So you may want to do a little research on that if you want to get some more information. All right, so there's your basic overview of wireless standards. So hopefully that makes sense and clears up any uh, confusion you might have had on this topic. All right, thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe.